Hello, it's Krat here with a breakdown for hammers. I know this isn't a popular weapon other than the fact that it deals strike damage for some PvE enemies, but honestly, I think it works plenty fine in PvE, and even has their own niche good points. While they're not great at PvP, I also don't think they're entirely unusable in PvP, which I will showcase in the next PvP video. Anyway, if you're new and need more information on the optimization done in this video, my defense calculation and soft caps guide are in the description down below. Let's get started with the ranges of the hammers. One weapon I do want to highlight though is the Scepter of the All-Knowing. Poor Gideon really got shafted here. This weapon's hitbox is actually shorter than the weapon model itself, which is very rare. Next, we should take a look at the different movesets of the hammers. The motion value or damage percent of hammers are quite similar but there are small differences in the movesets. This is the normal light attack chain of hammers, and this is the light attack chain of the club and the stone club. This is the normal heavy and charged heavy of hammers. This is the unique heavy of maces. This is the unique heavy of the monk's flame mace. This is the unique heavy of the spiked club. This is the rolling, crouching, and backstep attack for normal hammers. And this is the unique version for Morningstar. Morningstar turns these moves into a piercing attack, which can counter hit. With the move sets out of the way, let's take a look at the attack rating, or AR, of the weapons, starting with the unique weapons. Let's start with the Flail, I mean, the Nox Flowing Hammer, which has surprisingly good AR with strength investment. But the main reason you would run this hammer would be its unique weapon art, Flowing Form. This unique weapon art greatly extends the range of the Nox Flowing Hammer, which is much needed, as it is the shortest hammer. It makes this hammer one of the hammers with better area coverage too. On the other hand of the spectrum, we have the longest hammer, the Ringed Finger. Its unique weapon art, Flick, actually deals quite decent poise damage, in addition to damage. This skill isn't fast and has an obvious startup, so it's mostly a meme in PvP, but it can perform quite decently in PvE. However, it does have quite the long recovery frames too. Not super strong, but not completely weak either. The Scepter with the Shafted Range. Thankfully, its unique weapon art, Knowledge Above All, has quite the long range. Here, you see the debuff hit the troll from around this distance. The debuff decreases the magic and sacred resistance of everything, including you and your allies, by 10% for 30 seconds. It costs 35 FP, which is quite a bit and the buff isn't exactly powerful anyway. Plus, if your enemy deals either magic or sacred damage, it is also a detriment to you. Yeah, the debuff is usable, but is it really worth 4.5 weight and 35 FP per cast for an overall meh buff that might also work negatively? Remember, it also takes time to cast, and you can do another buff or attack with the same time frame you use to cast this weapon R2. Let's say you could have casted another weapon art that deals 1500 damage, like the Moon Veil or a Wing of Astol. This would mean that you need to do 15k damage on the enemy to break even for the time used to debuff your enemy. The debuff also doesn't deal any poise damage. It's definitely possible to make use of this debuff on enemies with higher HP, but overall unless you have enough burst damage, it's not that great. Its AR is also quite low for its investment especially when it's a split damage weapon. Not a weapon I'd usually recommend for the most part, but it's not entirely unusable either. Envoy's horn is a hammer you don't really swing around. How can we possibly disrespect an instrument like this? What would your music teacher say? This weapon does indeed have quite the low AR. Even with 80 faith investment, the bubbles don't do that much damage. Although it does have okay tracking, 
which can be quite hilarious for invasions when your opponent has no idea how to react. The sound this thing makes is also incredibly annoying, so even if you don't defeat your enemies, at least you can make sure their years suffered. Marika's hammer is not a faith weapon. Yeah, you heard that right. Let me explain. It's actually a quality weapon with faith requirement. Are you even more confused now? Probably. Despite having a D rating in dexterity and a C rating in faith, you actually get more AR from your dexterity than you do faith after hitting 20 faith. But what does that matter, Kright? Doesn't the weapon art scale to faith? Well, yes and no. Marika's hammer is actually one of those easier weapon arts to calculate. It simply follows the AR times MV rule for equal amounts of physical and holy damage. It does not have any bullet art component. I will explain weapon art in more detail with my weapon art video, so be sure to subscribe. Basically, all you have to know right now is we want to maximize the weapon's AR in order to get the most damage from its weapon art. So despite a huge gold circle appearing, the majority of the damage done on an optimized America's hammer is mostly physical. Here you can see with the same amount of stat investment, the America's hammer that uses a quality spread does more damage than the America's hammer that focuses on faith. How is the regular player supposed to know how to maximize this? I'm guessing the vast majority of the people will just miss this. Next, the Vare's Bouquet is one of the worst weapons in the entire game. You can tell the devs designed this weapon not with its practical usage in mind. You can still buff this weapon up with status greases and have the status scale to arcane, but you can do that with either of the ripple weapons too, with much more AR. It also applies to other status greases that are not blood, but I just want to say you can check out my halberd video for the numbers on the ripple halberd as it is way better for practical usage. Next, for the regular weapons, we have the club, stone club, curve club, mace, spiked club, morning star, war pick, which deals pure piercing damage rather than a regular striking damage of hammers, hammer, and monk's flame mace. Let's start with the heavy infusion. You can immediately see the stone club far outstrips the club in terms of damage while sharing the same move set. The war pick also has a relatively low AR. For PvE, people usually run hammers for the strike damage, and for PvP, there are way better piercing weapons, so this is generally an option I don't recommend. The next page shows the weapons with unique movesets that aren't the light attacks, two of which have bleed. These are the 80 strength versions. Next comes fire infusion, which is basically the split attribute infusion of strength. This infusion tends to be better at low strength levels and weaker than heavy at higher strength levels like 80 strength. Other than this usual characteristic, nothing too special to point out for the fire infusion. Next comes the keen infusion, which most hammers don't prefer. There are some strength requirements that are not met in order for standardization, but it won't negatively impact the AR. Just think of any requirement not met as extra cost you must meet. But in both Stone Club and Hammer's case, you would typically just do Strength if you want to run them. And here, I want to point out two pairs of weapons. First, the Club and the Stone Club. Since the Stone Club is also longer than the Club, it is pretty much the superior version of the Club. Let's take the weight difference between the two weapons and divide that by 0.7 because we definitely want to medium roll. That's 5 weights of extra requirements from Endurance we must meet which translates to around 4 or 5 endurance without Urtree's favor or the jar charms. If we take a look at their AR by subtracting 5 points from Stone Club's investment to account for the extra weight, it's very easy to see that the Stone Club is plainly superior. The other pair is the Curve Hammer and the Hammer. They share the same basic moveset, and the Hammer is also longer. Let's do the same thing we did for the Club and the Stone Club. We see that their weight difference accounts for around 2.14 weight for medium roll, which translates to 2 or 3 endurance points without the equip load charms. Comparing the stat standardized AR, we immediately see the hammer is just the superior option. Even if we account for higher strength requirements on both the better hammers, you will still find them more desirable for the other infusions at meta PvP levels or any higher level since you will have access to even more skill points. Continuing with the Keen Infusion, Monk's Flame Mace is pretty much the only hammer that scales better to dexterity. 
I think this is quite a surprise considering how Unga Bunga the heavy attack looked. Lightning infusion is like the dexterity counterpart for fire. For PvP, lightning defense is always the lowest, so this is often more desirable than fire. If you really want to play hammers with dexterity that isn't monk's flame mace, I suggest using lightning infusion over keen infusion, as lightning would give you comparatively more effective damage. If this isn't your first time watching my weapon breakdown video, I think you know exactly what I'm about to say for quality. This infusion is only useful for PvE at endgame, when you have more than enough points to spare. We see here with 85 points in both strength and dexterity, which means more investment than either 80 strength or 80 dexterity, we are still mostly looking at a weaker AR than either the heavy or keen infusion counterpart. For meta PvP levels, quality is simply not a good option. Sacred and Flame are two sides of the same coin when fully upgraded to plus 25. You're only picking between the elements. You'll be picking this infusion either because of your weapon art choice or because you want to main hand a hammer for a weapon art while offhanding the seal. Since hammers typically have a relatively low strength and dexterity requirement, this isn't actually such a bad idea if you like hammers. In fact, it is especially good at the first soft cap mark where faith and intelligence scale weapons better. A quick comparison between fire that has more stat investment than the sacred version with 3 less stat points, we see that the sacred version actually has higher AR. Furthermore, you gain the ability to offhand a seal. Pretty much no downsides here. If we compare the sacred version with the fire version at their 80 point level, we see that the fire gained more AR than the sacred, which is to be expected due to the scaling curve. The effect is far less pronounced here. Next, for the magic infusion, you can basically translate everything I've just talked about in the flame and sacred version here, except you would be scaling to intelligence instead of faith. For magic though, it would be because you rarely swing around your weapon, because otherwise the cold infusion would typically serve you better if attacking with your weapon is your main source of damage. Here for the cold infusion, you see a bunch of different scalings. Let me explain first. The club and the stone club prefer a high strength investment after 20 intelligence. With the same investment level, the monk's flame mace prefers high dexterity investment after 20 intelligence. The war pig prefers an extremely weird distribution of strength, dexterity, and intelligence, and still manages to produce a completely garbage AR. As for the rest of the hammers, they all like some strength and intelligence. The exact amounts may vary slightly according to the hammer, but this should give you a general idea. For poison infusion, we're going back to the 5 weapons I used on page 1 for heavy and keen. The war pick once again scales really weirdly. Honestly, status infusions for hammers aren't that great compared to other weapons because they don't really have multi-hits and their attacks aren't exactly really fast. Other weapons also have longer reach for PvP, making it easier to apply the status through enemy dodges at a longer distance. While the status infusions are still good, it is simply because the status effect themselves are good, rather than the hammer offering anything for the status infusions. As for a cult, for hammers without any base status effect that scales to arcane, these are weaker than the heavy or keen counterpart. Your two considerations are the spike club, which has pretty decent scaling for a cult and low strength requirements, or the morning star. Let's do a quick summary starting with the two strength based unique hammers. Honestly, you're going to be using them primarily because of their weapon art. The Nox Flowing Hammer suits PvP a bit more, while the Ring Finger does decent damage and stagger damage in PvE. As for America's Hammer, it isn't a faith weapon. It is a quality weapon chosen for its weapon art. For more details, check the America's section. The Envoy's Horn doesn't really deal great damage. This is probably best used for invasions, with their oddly decent tracking to annoy inexperienced opponents. Varys Bouquet can be buffed with status greases, but it has an extremely low AR. Either of the Ripple weapons would be better with the status greases. Scepter of the All-Knowing is mainly used for the weapon art, which is kind of mediocre. It can indeed increase your overall damage on targets with high HP over 30 seconds, but generally not something you would really use for most targets. For the two clubs with a unique light attack moveset, have shown that the stone club is basically the superior version of the club and has quite high AR. For these hammers, they all have a unique heavy attack or running rolling attack. 
The monk's flame mace is the only hammer that scales better to dexterity. The spike club and morning star also have base bleed. I don't think the special attacks are particularly great for any of these hammers. Next, the war pick only deals piercing damage, but has poor scaling and really poor AR. I don't suggest using this weapon because this is one of the worst if not the worst piercing weapons. You also lose the advantage of dealing strike damage with hammers on PvE mobs like the Crystallians. I've also shown that the hammer is just a superior curve club and is one of the longest hammers. Funny enough, this basic hammer is what I would suggest people to try if you want to try hammers. If you found this video helpful and like in-depth breakdowns backed up with facts, like and subscribe for more. Crite, signing out.